Hi, my name is Amr Azam and today I would like to present to you YSKG, a balanced access to web knowledge graphs. This is a collaboration work between Vienna University of Economics and Business in Austria and Aalborg University in Denmark. The semantic web has over the past two decades seen a steady increase in the amount of data published on linked open data, forming a web of interconnected knowledge graphs called the Lot Cloud. DBpedia and Diago are example of the knowledge graphs that exist on the Lot Cloud. The web knowledge graphs are usually published on the web in an RDF triple format where each triple consists of subject, predicate, and object. So basically, knowledge graphs can be represented as a set of RDF triples. Here we have an example of a triple where the album Love of My Life is created by the Queen's Band. To query knowledge graphs, we depend on a Sparkle. Sparkle is a standard query language for RDF. A Sparkle query is a set of basic graph patterns where each basic graph pattern consists of set of triple patterns here we have an example of a sparkle query that we tried to query dbpedia to find the list of arts albums and genres and the songs that they have written one of the most common ways to enable querying the knowledge graphs published on the web is using sparkle endpoints a Sparkle endpoint is an interface to an underlying RDF data store where the client tries to send the server a Sparkle query and then the server executes this query over the RDF data store and responds to the client with the results binding. However, there are still serious barriers to use public Sparkle endpoints to query knowledge graphs published on the web. This is because Sparkle endpoints are expensive to host and hard to maintain when large datasets are served. Or also concurrent executions of complex queries is allowed to multiple clients. As an example, Sparkles, which is a service that monitors 565 Sparkle endpoints, shows that 70% of the Sparkle endpoints are not available as of March 2021. Another way to query knowledge graph is to download the entire data dump and query it locally on an RDF store. However, downloading the data dump lacks the knowledge graph live querying experience and it is also hard to maintain on the client side. That's why in 2016, Link Data Fragment Framework has been proposed to explore the spectrum of potential web querying interfaces in between Sparkle endpoints, which is a full server-side solution, and Data Dumps, which is a full client-side solution. So basically, Link Data Fragments aim to explore what happens when we redistribute the load between clients and servers. Triple pattern fragment is the first form of linked data fragment framework to enable low cost querying to the knowledge graphs. TPF restricts the server side to only answer single triple patterns and shifts the processing of more complex patterns to the client side. Here we have an example of a Sparkle query where the client is sent a triple pattern by triple pattern to the server and server responds with intermediate results. The client joined these intermediate results to find the final answer for the Sparkle query. Bindings restricted triple pattern fragments is another interface that follows linked data fragment. It's basically an extension of triple pattern fragment where it tries to bulk the bindings of previously evaluated triple patterns to the server so that the server reduces the intermediate result shipped back to the client. This enables us to reduce the network overhead but still BRTPF struggles with the queries that have high intermediate results. Star pattern fragment is another linked data fragment interface. It is basically a generalization of BRTPF. The SPF server is not only able to handle 
single patterns but also able to handle star patterns. This enabled us to have high performance since we reduced the intermediate result shipped from the server to the client. But still, SPF struggles with the queries that have high intermediate results. SmartKG is an interface that combines triple pattern refragment to answer single triple patterns with the idea to ship graph partitions to answer star patterns. So basically, the server sends back to the client indexed and compressed graph partitions in the well-known format HDT. SmartKG enabled us to have a high available server but with the cost of sending high intermediate results especially for the high selective queries. To this end, all existing interfaces suffer from an, an imbalanced load on either the client side such as data dumps, TPF and SmartKG or server side such as Sparkle endpoints and Sage and SPF. So, in this paper, we present YSKG, which is, to the best of our knowledge, the first work that dynamically shifts the query processing load between the clients and the servers. Basically, YSKG employs a cost model to minimize the total time consumed by the client and server resources. And this cost model considers the current load on both the server and the client. And when we talk about the current load, we mean the current server load, the client capabilities, the estimation of the necessary data transfer between the client and the server, and also the network bandwidth. To be specific, YSKG combines two linked data fragments, APIs that enables star-shaped subqueries. SmartKG, which processes the star queries on the client side, and SPF, which processes the star queries on the server side. Our dynamic cost model picks the best suited API per star subquery based on the current server load, the client capabilities, the network bandwidth, and the cardinality estimation of this star pattern. Here we explain the general approach of YSKG to evaluate the BGP. First, SmartKG client sends a request to the server to, re to retrieve a query execution plan to the input BGP. The second step, YSKG server creates a plan to the input BGP. The first step of creating this plan is to decompose the input BGP into a set of star patterns. For example, in this query, we have two stars, one in blue and one in orange, plus TP6, which is a single treble pattern. After the decomposition step, YSKG server reorders the star patterns based on the selectivity. And here in our example, we have SP1 has higher selectivity than SP2, that we, that's why we start with SP1 in the join first. The last step of the plan creation, YSKG server selects between evaluating each star pattern on the server using SPF or on the client using SmartKG. And this decision is based on the cost model. Here in our example, SP1 will be executed using SPF on the server side and SP2 will be executed using SmartKG on the client side. After receiving the plan from the server, YSKG client calls the predetermined interface to evaluate each star pattern and incrementally joining the intermediate results. So here in our example, for the first star, YSKG will send an SPF request and the server will respond with the SPF intermediate results. And for the second star, the client will send a smart KG request and the server will respond with a graph partition that contains the results. Finally, the single triple pattern will be evaluated based on an SPF request. Now we will have a look on YSKG server cost model. 
Our cost model is actually inspired by the classic R star optimizer, which was originally made for the distributed systems. The cost of a query is estimated as the sum of four time components, the CPU processing, the messaging, the data transfer, and the input output operation. In our case, Wise KG cost model estimates the cost in time of evaluating a star pattern using a smart KG or SPF. If the cost of SPF is less than or equal to the cost of a smart KG, then we use this SPF API. Else, we use smart KG API. To compare Wise KG to the state of the art, we perform experiments over eight configurations with increasing number of clients, starting from a single client up to 128 clients. And for the hardware configuration, each client is limited to one core and 128 gigabyte main memory, and the server has 32 cores and 128 gigabyte main memory. And for the network, the clients and the servers are locating on the same network with 100 gigabit network. In our experimental setup, we had three query workloads. The first one is the basic testing query workload obtained from what diff query template. The second one is what diff stress testing, which is obtained from what diff stress testing suit. The third one is DBpedia, which contains 28 selected queries from a real workload query log called LSQ. The first metric in our evaluation is the number of timeouts. We set the timeout to 5 minutes in our experiment. Wise KG has no timeouts except in 1 billion watt div data set. To be precise, only 2% of the total workload queries has timeout, while for Smart KG 13% of the query workload and for SPF it's 21%. Also. Wise KG has the least stress workload execution time as Wise KG is up to four times faster than SPF and Smart KG and up to an order of magnitude faster than Sage and TPF on what div 1 billion with a load of 128 concurrent clients. In our experiment, we evaluate the resource consumption of each system. Wise KG transfers on average 5.5 megabyte per query while SPF transfers 7 megabyte and Smart KG transfers on average 13 megabyte over what div 100 million. Wise KG uses up to 60% of the CPU, almost in the middle between SPF that evaluates all the star patterns on the server side and Smart KG that evaluates all the star patterns on the client side. To summarize our presentation, Wise KG is a querying interface that balances the Sparkle query execution load between servers and clients. Also, our experiments show that YSKG significantly outperforms the state-of-the-art standalone LDF interfaces on high-demanding workloads. And for more information, please visit our GitHub that you will have our, the implementation of YSKG and more details about our experiments. Thank you, and we would like to receive your 